gaming, gaming, gaming. Yes, we're talking about gaming on the Pixel Fold. And uh, I apologize, I haven't done this video in a while, but as you can see, it's finally here. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification icon so you can watch more videos like this because we do a lot of gaming videos on the channel. So the Pixel Fold, how good is it gaming? We know it runs a Tensor G2 chipset, so let's keep that aside for a second, but it's got a really unique cover display. This is the first cover display on a foldable that just has such great real estate, at least here in the US market or in the Western world. 5.8 inches, 120 hertz display, it looks absolutely gorgeous. So you're probably looking at that Miles Morales wallpaper and going, hey, I want that. Use the link in the description or follow me on Pinterest, you will find it there. So how is it like gaming on that cover display? Is it comfortable enough? Is it easy to use? Because you don't want to always open up the internal display. And honestly, wow, uh, they've done a really good job here. We played Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile, and Genshin Impact. And all three games ran really well. I didn't have to move my controls for say Call of Duty Mobile or PUBG Mobile. I was able to game effectively on there. And then with Genshin Impact, it was also the same thing. And that was pretty smooth. And I liked that experience extensively. Now, before we continue, let's find out what Pulseway is all about. Now the internal display. So we've got a 7.6 inch display. It is massive, it opens up. The one thing you hear from a lot of people who have the Pixel Fold is that yes, the hinge does open up all the way to 180 degrees. You gotta kind of bend it out a little bit, puts a little flex to it, but this display is massive and you've got nice real estate. You will feel some of that crease on there, which isn't bad, but what is the gaming experience like? Also 120 Hertz display and Playing games like Call of Duty Mobile, it is really effective, it's really smooth. It feels a little bit tighter sometimes, but you can resize, of course, your controls for that. Same thing with PUBG Mobile, as well as also Genshin Impact. So your gaming experience internally here works pretty well, and it flows pretty well. Now, the other thing to mention is that Google has a gaming dashboard, and it's easily set up where you can have it as a floating bubble on the side, and it shows your FPS readouts, which I used in this video, and you will see some of the FPS readouts when I, when I get to that. And, the, and it also allows you to turn on notifications and things like that, so it's pretty nice uh, in terms of that kind of functionality. Now, speaking of FPS readouts, what do we get from the Tensor G2? We know what it is statistically, but is it a little bit better on this device? So the G2, uh, playing something like Call of Duty Mobile, works well, 60 frames per second, we can get that with ease, not a problem. And then when we move over to PUBG Mobile, 60 frames per second on Extreme HDR. So that's pretty nice, it's solid. But what about the kicker? What about Genshin Impact, which is our game that really pushes us to the max? Max settings, 60 frames, and we're getting 28 frames per second, 20, 29 frames per second. It runs really slow, and honestly, it's just not that good of a gaming experience that way. Now, it doesn't mean you can't game and play Genshin Impact. You just can't run it at you know, max settings. So basically, you're running at 30 frames per second, that's just what you're stuck at. Now, what about playing from the internal to external display moving back and forth? So when you're starting off gaming on the external display, the 5.8 inches, and you wanna say go to bigger real estate, you can switch over. The one thing you notice though is that depending on how you're playing, it will go into the same screen size that you had with the external display. And you have to either resize it, which means you're restarting the game, or you can move it to whichever position, upper, lower, or middle on the screen. It's annoying, it's something that happens, so the best thing is to kind of close it up and go back to the external display. Now, same thing with the internal display. If you're starting your game session there, and say you want to kind of close it up and just have something smaller to play, maybe we say you're walking around you're on the bus or something, the problem here is that your screen gets a little bit squished, so your buttons are all over the place, doesn't feel as comfortable, so you have similar experience there as well. So it's not a fluid experience transitioning between either of the displays. Now you can have a dual gaming setup by having split screen and having two games at once, which I thought was really cool and I was hoping you could actually share it so you can have one person playing one way and the other, but that's not the case. You have both, both displays kind of facing you, but you can play together that way. 
Now let's talk about temperatures. Uh, this chipset runs hot. You can get, you're getting about 109 to 110 degrees maximum on this uh, in terms of gaming sessions. That's what happens with the uh, Pixel Fold. Uh, but again, it's only on the right hand side, the side that has the camera housing on the screen side itself not on the other side. So uh, just be careful of that when you're doing your gaming sessions on there. And in terms of speakers, the speakers are really solid. Now, um, I would say definitely take a quick listen here and see how well they sound. What do you think? Should we game on this device? Should we care about gaming on here? I think, you know, for everyone who likes to game like me, it's always important to find out that the device you're spending money on can actually do that. This device is a thousand 800. It's expensive. So you want it to cover a lot of those marks. We know it's got a really good camera. We know that cover display works out well. The gaming experience is really solid, but it doesn't extend to the higher end of gaming experiences. And that's just where it is. But for a foldable, I find it really fun to be able to use that cover display and not have to go to the external display. Now, the other foldables coming out, like the Z44, there's a rumored OnePlus foldable. We'll have to see how this stacks up later with those devices. But till then, I would say guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, what you think about it. And this is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.